In today's interconnected world, everything is connected to everything else. That's to say that systems run the world. From human systems like the nervous system, circulatory system and digestive system to the much more profound systems that impact the entire world. The Earth is a large complex planet made up of many different systems that interact in countless ways, sometimes deep and very surprising ways. Take the Amazon tropical rainforest for example. There is no place on Earth quite like it. It is one of the greatest natural habitats on the planet. It covers 40% of the South American continent, contains nearly 400 billion individual trees within the forest, and creates one-fifth of our planet's oxygen. The river basin feeding the mighty Amazon carries 20% of Earth's total river water and spans across nine countries. The Amazon represents more than half of the planet's remaining rainforests. Not only is it the world's largest rainforest, it is also the most biodiverse, with one in ten species on the planet existing here and nowhere else, including one in five bird species on Earth and even one in every five fish species call the Amazon River home. As big and mighty as it is, the Amazon is sustained by the Sahara Desert. This system is nothing short of extraordinary. On one side of the Atlantic Ocean is one of the most inhospitable and driest wilderness on Earth with searing temperatures and little to zero rainfall. And on the other side is one of the wettest and most fertile locations on Earth. Despite over 10,000 kilometers of open ocean separating the world's largest rainforest and the world's largest hot desert, the two regions are intimately connected and do share a vital commonality, nutrient-rich dust. After strong winds sweep across the Sahara, a tan cloud rises in the air, stretches between the continent and ties together the desert and the jungle. The Sahara is the largest source of dust on the planet. Winds known as Northeasterly Hamatan picks up millions of tons of dust each year and carries it past the western edge of the Sahara, traveling across the Atlantic Ocean to the Amazon Basin. You may be wondering why this Saharan dust is so important to the Amazon. Well, it's not just the dust, it's the nutrients the dust carries. Specifically, the Saharan dust is rich in phosphorus, one of the most vital plant nutrients for plant growth, which the Amazon rainforest depends on in order to flourish. The thick dust is clearly visible on satellite imagery too. You can make it out by the brown sheen spreading off the African coast. It is so dense, it's making it almost hard to tell where the continent ends and where the ocean begins. Scientists have known for decades that great plumes of dust get lifted by winds from the Sahara and travel thousands of miles across the Atlantic, eventually coming to rest in the Amazon basin. But it's only until a few years ago have experts from NASA been able to not only measure the volume of dust, they have also calculated how much phosphorus gets carried across the ocean from one of the planet's most desolate places to one of its most fertile, using three-dimensional modeling through satellites. Most of the dust is carried from what is known as the Bordel Depression in Chad, an ancient lake bed where rock minerals loaded with phosphorus and composed of dead microorganisms, skeletons of diatoms that trace their origin back to when the depression was full of water. At its peak, around 10,000 years ago, Mega Lake Chad was the largest freshwater lake on Earth, sprawling 400,000 square kilometers or 150,000 square miles and would still have been the largest lake on Earth today, larger than the massive Caspian Sea. Thousands of years ago, parts of the Sahara 
used to have massive lakes. Some of the early Holocene Paleo lakes in North Africa were exceptionally large. In the north was Mega Lake Fezzan in modern day Libya. In the south was Mega Lake Chad, shared between modern day Chad, Niger, Nigeria, and Cameroon. In the west was Shorts Mega Lake in modern day Algeria, and in the east was Mega Lake Turkana in Kenya. Based on geological records, these were permanent open basin lakes where sediment made of organic materials accumulated over thousands of years. The dust in these former lakes have the most amount of phosphorus. But previous research has shown that 90% of the soil in the Amazon rainforest is phosphorus deficient. Scientists say that rain and rivers wash away many of the nutrients right out of the forest and into the ocean through flooding. The Amazon River and its tributaries wash away thousands of tons of nutrient-rich topsoil every year. Due to high competition of nutrients in the jungle, the soil there is depleted. Aside from the dust delivered phosphorus from the Sahara, decomposing plant materials are the only way the soil gets replenished. The phosphorus that reaches Amazon soils from the Sahara Desert, an estimated 22,000 tons per year, is about the same amount that is lost from rain and flooding. The data shows that wind picks up on average 182 million tons of dust each year and carries it past the western edge of the Sahara. This volume is equivalent to nearly 700,000 semi-trucks filled with dust. As the dust does the 1,600-mile transatlantic journey, some drop to the water or is flushed from the sky by rain. Near the eastern coast of South America, 132 million tons remain in the air and 27 million tons, enough to fill 100,000 semi-trucks, fall to the surface over the Amazon basin, fertilizing the rainforest. About 43 million tons of dust travel further to settle over the Caribbean Sea. This is the largest transport of dust on the planet and also largely contributes to the building of beaches in the Caribbean like Bahamas and Barbados as well as contributes to agriculture. When you eat a tomato grown in Florida, chances are it was grown in African soil, a clear lesson that we are all connected by Earth's systems. Year on year, there has been a variation of the amount of dust that reaches the Amazon, some years depositing more dust than others. A possibility of what may be causing the variation of the amount of dust transported is the Sahel, a strip of semi-arid land on the southern border of the Sahara. When rain amounts in the Sahel are higher, the volume of dust is lower. The higher rainfall could make more vegetation grow in the Sahel, leaving less sand exposed to winds to blow away. Another threat to the sustenance provided by the Sahara is the Great Green Wall project in Africa. Ten African countries are moving ahead with an ambitious pan-African effort to protect arable land from the encroaching Sahara by planting trees from Senegal in the west all the way to Djibouti in the east. Dubbed the Great Green Wall, it is an African-led movement with an ambition to grow an 8,000-kilometer newest natural wonder of the world across the entire width of Africa, designed to trap the sands of the Sahara, halt the advance of the desert, 100 million hectares of land. However, the transcontinental dust comes with some powerful global effects, not all of which are good. This dust is linked to problems with asthma and other respiratory diseases. Dust hazes are also a hindrance to the all-important tourism sector. On average, the dust storm occur around 100 days per year. More positively, the dust particles also scatter the sun's rays at dusk and dawn, which gives way to stunning sunrises and sunsets.
If you find yourself reaching for your phone to post yet another awesome sunset peak to Instagram, thank the Saharan Desert. More good news is that the Saharan dust can temporarily suppress hurricane formation or keep storms from getting stronger since hot, dusty air tends to put a stop to thunderstorm development, so more dust equals fewer hurricanes. As I said in the beginning, in today's interconnected world, everything is connected to everything else. A system is an interconnected set of components that are linked through interconnections that function to create an outcome. The interaction of components and their interactions in Earth systems create well-oiled functioning systems like one of the planet's most notable. The system of how the world's driest desert sustains the largest and most fertile rainforests. Our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to have some better understanding of the continent and all matters Africa, start now by subscribing and you'll be on your way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.